Hello, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about expanding polynomials. So if you're following my uh, quadratic series, uh, this is just the next step in the series that I'm doing. Otherwise, if you're just tuning in now, this is a pretty useful notion to have in uh, any branch of mathematics. So you can probably tune in for this video and it'll, it'll help you somehow. Uh, it is going to be a little bit more advanced. If you're in grade 7 or 8, if you're watching, that's great. If you can follow along, that's even better. Uh, but if not, grade 9, 10s, you should be able to follow along. And this is a really useful concept again that will help you. So what is a polynomial? I just want to elaborate on that before I moved on. So a polynomial is essentially like a sentence. It's like a sentence in mathematics. Like in uh, literature, you have sentences, you have words. So a polynomial in mathematics is like a sentence of math. So a polynomial can be many different things. It can be a monomial, it can be a binomial, trinomial, and it's a polynomial if it's, there's many terms in it. So a polynomial, uh, or let's say we had 4x cubed, right? That I call a monomial. Means there's only one term in it. If you want to think of the sentence analogy, Think of only one word into sen uh, one word into sentence. So that's probably that's pretty weird. One word in a sentence, but just uh, humor me for now. Four x four x cubed. That's a monomial. There's only one term. Let's say I had four x cubed plus six x squared. Right? Then I have two words or I have two terms. Then it's not called a monomial anymore. It's called a binomial. Right? And now I think you guys have picked up on the idea. If I had four x cubed plus 6x squared, plus 3, plus 4y squared. Now I have many different types of words in the, in the equation or the expression, the sentence. So that is called a polynomial. There's many different terms in it. So just uh, for you guys who are interested in what a polynomial means, that's what a polynomial is. Many different terms. All right? So now let's get to what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about going from factored form to standard form for the quadratics viewers or just expanding binomials for people that are just too late. So Let me just put up an example. So let's say you had x plus 3 and x minus 2. So for the quadratics viewers, this should look familiar. This looks like factored form, right? My two zeros, I just flip the sign, negative 3, 0, 2, 0. And for the people that are just tuning in, this is simply two binomials, right? One term, one term, one term, one term. So it's a simple binomial. So the thing is, how do I expand this? Expand mean, uh, for quadratic spheres, go from this to standard form equations. So there's an easy way to do it. Uh, a lot of teachers, if you're in school, probably use the FOIL method, here in Canada at least. FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. I'm not going to use that method. I'm just going to go to arithmetic here. And what that is, is just I'm going to go straight to the process. And I think you guys will pick up on what I'm doing. And uh, I used FOIL. FOIL is an excellent method. I'm sure your teachers will show you. But for the sake of this video, and I am supplementary material, I'm going to go a little bit faster and just show you uh, the way of expanding polynomials. So, again, follow me through, and I think you should be good. So, what I have to do is I have to turn this into an expression. So, how I do that is first I take the x, right? So, I take my x, and I multiply it by the two things in this binomial here. So, I have two terms in this uh, binomial here, right? So I take the x and I multiply it by both. So follow me. So x times x is my first step. So x times x is simply x squared. So you should be good with multiplying things and exponents when you're dealing with stuff like this. You should be good with that. I'm hoping you are already familiar with that. So again, so I'm multiplying x by the two things in here. So x times x, I've done. Now I have to do x times negative 2. So what's x times negative 2? Negative 2x. So now that I'm, I've multiplied x by the two things in here, the way I remember doing it is I would cross out the x, meaning I'm done with the x now. Now I have to deal with the 3. And guess what we do with the 3? We do the same thing. So I do 3 times x, which is 3x. And then I do 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. And again, I've multiplied 3 by the two things in here, so I'm done with it. If you have a binomial and you've multiply each term in one binomial by the two terms in the other binomial. So I've multiplied x by the two things in here, I've multiplied 3 by the two things in here, thus I have crosses, right? So I'm done with them. If you have two crosses and it's two expressions like this, it's, uh, that means you're done. You're, you're okay with it, all right? So now we move on. So what I mean by move on is now we have to collect like terms. 
So if I were to write steps, it would be multiply. Multiply would be your first step, and collect like terms would be your second step. Again, I'm being very, uh, I'm having a very reductionist view in this. It's very simple. I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible. So x squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 6. How do I simplify that? So x squared and negative 6, they're not like terms. And like terms, I mean they have to be the same. They look the same. So x squared does not look like negative 6 at all. But if you notice, negative 2x and plus 3x are like terms because they both have an x and they both have an integer associated with them. And the highest power is 1. We don't see the power, but there's a power. So if I collect my like terms, x squared minus 2x plus 3x, simply 3 minus 2 is plus x. It's 3 minus 2 is 1. I don't put the 1. As in math, you see, we don't like putting 1s. So negative 6 stays. So again, we went from two binomials to a standard form equation. And for the quadratic viewers, you have factored form, standard form. Now you know how to go from factored form to standard form. So if someone gives you an equation in factored form and they want it in standard form, go through this method, you should be good. So I'm going to do two more examples, don't worry. If you haven't picked up on it right now, you'll probably pick it up, uh, pick it up in the next few examples. So let me get rid of this example. Something else you might see in these types of questions is you might see a number in front. So let's say we had 3, x plus 4, and you had x minus 2. So let's expand this. So the 3 might be freaking some of you out. Don't worry, it's nothing to freak out about. Uh, the way I deal with it is I put square brackets for the two binomials, or whatever amount of uh, polynomials you have in there. So the 3 we're going to deal with last. Don't worry about the 3 for now. So let's bring the 3 here, and let's put our square brackets. Now let's deal with the inside. So again, follow the simple rules. You take x, and you multiply it by the two things in there. So x times x is my first thing to do, so x squared x times negative 2 is my next step, so that's negative 2x. So have I multiplied x by the two things? Exactly, I have. So let's cross that out, meaning I'm done with the x. So I just have to do one more thing, which is 4. So 4 times positive x is 4x. So I just put a plus 4x there. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. There we go, negative 8, and you finish that. And am I done with the 4 now? Have I multiplied by the 2? Yes. So two expressions, right? One expression, one expression. Two crosses, meaning I'm done with this. Now I collect my like terms. So uh, to collect my like terms, again, we're going to deal with the 3 last, and you'll see how simple it is to deal with the 3. So x squared and negative 8, I can't do anything. Negative 2x plus 4x, hey, these are like terms, so I will collect those together. So 4 minus 2 is simply 2, so 2x minus 8. Now you're like, well, I still have a 3 in front. Well, to get rid of the 3, all you do is you take the 3 and you multiply it by everything in here. So you multiply 3 by everything in here. So it's kind of similar to this, but in this case you only have one number, so I'm just going to multiply this by everything and I'll be done. So 3 times x squared is 3x squared, right? I've done that. 3 times 2x is 6x, right? The x is nothing's really happening in the x's, I'm just multiplying the numbers. So 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. See? I went from that to this, and it's very simple. Again, deal with your uh, expressions first. So I had x plus 4x minus 2, multiplied x by the 2, uh, by the two numbers here, 4 by the two numbers here, and then I was done with that. Collected my like terms. After collecting the like terms, I just brought the 3 in, and bringing the 3 in, all that means is multiplying the 3 by everything in here. If you can do that, you're perfect. So let's do one last example, and I think we can call it a day for this video. So let's say we had two letters and numbers. What would we do in that case? So actually, it's not too difficult to uh, deal with. So I'm going to just come up with one right off the top of my head. So 4a plus 2b and 3a minus uh, 3b. So we have something like that. All right. So we have lots of letters, lots of numbers. Don't worry, nothing to panic about. It's the same rules apply here. All right. So first, I would take 4a and I would multiply it by the two things in here. The only tricky part about this question is that you have two different letters and you might get stuck as to what you do when you're multiplying the two letters. But I'll show you what you do. So let's do that first. So let's multiply 4a first by 3a. So 
So that's 12a squared, because 4 times 3 is 12, a times a is a squared, so 12a squared. Now I multiply 4a by negative 3b. And what I do there is first let's deal with the numbers. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. But a times b, I just write as ab. All right? That's all I have to do. Don't worry about anything else. And have I multiplied 4a by the two numbers in here? Yes, I have. So I can cross that out. Done with that. Now I have 2b multiplied by the two numbers here. So 2b times 3a. So let's do 2 times 3 first, which is 6 plus 6, right? And b times a is the same thing as a times b, like what I did there. So I can write that as ab. You might notice two like terms. We're going to collect those. And now I have 2b times negative 3b. So let's uh, collect the numbers first. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. b times b is b squared. Hopefully you can see that all right. And have I multiplied 2b by the two numbers in here? Yes, I have. I'm done. I have two crosses and I have two expressions, meaning I'm done expanding. Now I collect like terms. So 12a squared, I don't see anything else like 12a squared, do you? Uh, hopefully not. Uh, so 12a squared I can bring down perfectly fine. And now I have negative 12ab plus 6ab. So negative 12ab plus 6ab is the same thing as 6 minus 12, negative 12 plus 6, whatever you see. So this is going to be negative 6ab, right? Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6, so ab. And the negative 6b squared, I keep the same. Again, I went from something like that to something like this. So I went from factored to standard. Again, this is not too difficult. I showed you how to do it. I showed you one method of doing it. There's the FOIL method too, which you'll probably be shown by your teachers when we are back in school. Uh, but for now, again, if you have a binomial like this, take your first term, multiply it by the two terms in the other binomial. Take your second term, multiply it by the other two, bin uh, other two numbers and just cross them out when you're done multiplying it by the two. And if you have two crosses and you have two expressions like this, meaning you're done expanding, come down here and collect your like terms and you're good to go. Again, hopefully that video helped you a little bit. So if you're in the quadratic series, if you see a factored form equation and you want to go to standard form, you can just follow these simple methods and it should be good enough. So again, hopefully that video helped for any grade that you're in. And if you're working with polynomials, this is definitely something that will help. And again, keep watching the videos. I'll be posting math content for a variety of grades. Right now, it's more high school. I will get to some grade 7 and 8 uh, sooner than later. So again, uh, thanks for watching the videos if you are and tuning in. And I'll get to some more interesting mathematics as soon as I can. Thanks.